Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about the new mapping options in 3D Invigorator 5.0. There's some really great new ways of applying textures to our 3D objects, and I'm going to talk about them in detail in this tutorial. So let's get rolling. The first step, as always, is to convert our layer to a smart object. And what this will do is when we apply 3D Invigorator, it will apply as a smart filter, which means when we save this file, we can go back at any point in time and make changes to Invigorator. So we can come back six months later and still change the textures and the geometry and everything that 3D Invigorator does. And so it's a really great way of working with 3D Invigorator because you don't want to go through the process of setting all this stuff up and then have the client come in six months later and say, oh, hey, I want to change the texture a little bit or I want to do this or that. And you have to start from scratch. So by having a smart object, when I apply 3D Invigorator, it'll apply as a smart filter and it will launch the 3D Invigorator window. And you can see that I already have a Illustrator file that I brought into 3D Invigorator. And we're going to zoom in a little bit on my heart here. And I'm going to make a couple changes right off the bat. We're going to increase the depth, make it a fatter heart. We're going to use the Spike Buster control to get rid of this extended spike off the bottom of the heart. So you can see if I crank that up, it gives us a little bit more of a base here. Now you might want that extended spike down there, it just kind of depends on what look you're going for. But I kind of prefer having it chopped off down at the bottom here. And so that's what we're going to go with. And I'm going to leave the bevel as is. And that should be good to go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, aside from going to our object controls and changing the depth, and I'm also going to increase the object smoothness. This will make for a little bit more nicely rendered objects. Crank it up to around 80. And then I'm going to go to my material swatches here. And we're going to select one of the materials. And in this case, we're just going to select a gradient. Now, this is also something new in 3D Invigorator 5.0. There are built-in gradients that you can use as textures part of the Gradient Works package that Zax Works has included in 3D Invigorator 5.0. So that's one cool new feature. And we'll be getting into all the different new material options in a second, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is mapping. Now you'll notice that my texture here looks great on the front face, but around my edges you can see that it doesn't line up. It looks like a completely different texture. If I rotate around this, you'll see that my edges don't look like they're really connected to the texture on the front face. It looks like two completely separate textures. And that's because it is. Because by default, I'm using UV mapping. And I can see this if I go to Material Docs. If we go to the Material Docs palette, this is where all the textures that are applied to my objects are. And we can click on this material, and we can see that my mapping is set to UV. Now, this works in some cases. If you don't mind the, the different textures on the edges and the front face, then it's fine. But I want something that's a little bit more coherent. I want something that's a little bit more... I want something that looks a little bit more like the texture goes around the entire object. And so the first mapping option I'm going to try is spherical. And so you can imagine a large sphere encircling my object and then the texture projected from that sphere down onto the object. Kind of like if you were to wrap a car or something with an advertisement, you might take this big sphere and just kind of just shrink it down until it's just wrapped around the car. And that's kind of what's happening here with our heart. So if I do a test here, and you can see some of the polygons on the front face. If I actually do a render, those go away. And you can see that now my texture looks like it's more flows around the entire object. My edges and my front face don't look like they're different parts of the object. And so that's a really important component to creating realistic looking objects. 
Sometimes having different textures on the sides and the front are fine, but in a lot of cases, that's not what we're going for and we want the texture to look like it's circling or it's part of the entire object. And you can see that we have other different mapping options. The ones that I really think are useful are UV mapping, spherical, as we're using here, cubic, and especially camera view. And we'll jump into those in just a second. And of course, I can move my texture around if I want to. I can reposition it, I can change the rotation, I can change the scale, and we'll talk about that in just a moment as well. But now let's make some changes to the material. Let's click on the material editor. I'll double click on my texture that's in the material doc. And we'll start adding and building our texture. You can see if I turn down the arrow here, I get all sorts of options that weren't available to me in previous versions of 3D Invigorator. I can see my color here. I can see all my blending modes. And I'll tell you why we need blending modes in just a moment. I can move things up and down. I have an alpha channel and I have different gradient settings. So for example, I can click on my settings button right here and this will bring up my options for the gradient. I'll cancel that right now. I can click on the transform button and this will allow me to move the texture around, rotate it, scale it. Cancel that as well. I can invert it. This is particularly useful with the alpha channel or if you have a black and white texture. So those are all nifty, but they really come into play when you start adding components to your texture. So I'm going to come up here and click on my plus button. It's going to add another layer to my texture. And in this case, I'm going to select an image. So I'll click on the image in the pop-up. It'll ask me where I want to go look for that image. And I'll go to my Invigorator tutorial files, select my Golden Clouds JPEG, and open that up. And you can see that loads it in there, and that looks great, but we can't see it. So what's the deal? Well, we have this gradient layer set to normal. So just like in Photoshop, if you have two layers stacked on top of each other, the bottommost layer isn't going to be seen. You either need to have some sort of transparency on the top layer, or you need to have a blend mode. And so in this case, we're going to change the blend mode to overlay and see what that does for us. And now you can see the golden clouds texture is being combined with my red gradient and creating a completely new texture. And we can render that out to see what it looks like. And now you start to see some of the problems with spherical mapping. We're getting a lot of distortion around the edges and on the front face. And while that looks okay, that may not be what we want. So we might want to try a different mapping. So let's try camera view. And now this gives us a much more realistic looking texture. You don't see the distortion problems. And overall, it just looks a lot better. So what mapping you choose is really going to depend on the texture that you have and the object. How does the texture wrap around the object? So if you have something like an image, the camera view mapping is a very good way of going. If you don't have an image in it, and it's really just sort of this organic thing, then spherical is a good way of doing it. And you notice that, you know, even when I had spherical, it gave it a very interesting texture. Certainly the stretched look could be something that you want. But just be aware that spherical is probably going to distort things a little bit more than camera view. So if you want the texture undistorted, camera view is the way to go. And so that gives us a really nice texture, but we're going to add another layer. And I'm going to move this layer up a little bit. So we're going to click on the up arrow and move it above my golden clouds texture. You'll notice that the blend mode is set to normal. So again, it's going to cut off the golden clouds texture. And I'm going to change this to cellular noise. And this is another new feature within 3D Invigorator 5.0. The ability to have procedural textures built in. These are fractal noise textures. So they're resolution independent. And no matter what resolution you render out your object to, it will render it out at the appropriate size. 
I'm going to increase the size so I get much smaller grains of texture. And so that's great. We're going to click OK. And then once we have that, we're going to set it to set the blend mode to overlay. Now let's click on the invert button here and see what happens now. So that's going to swap the, that's going to invert the texture, change all the white colors to black and all the blacks to white and give you again, an even different texture. So there's just lots of ways of playing around with these procedural textures and combining them and creating other interesting new textures. And I kind of like it with the, uh, a little bit darker and we can see what that looks like. And so now we've created this really complex texture. We have a gradient, we've got some fractal noise in here, and then we have an image to give it even more depth. And of course I can save this texture out and we'll save it out as red, orange, fire. Go to our materials commands and save material to bin. And that will add it to our material swatches so that whenever we, if we go ahead and add like a new object, let's say we want to scoot our camera over a little bit. Actually, we'll move our heart object out of the way for the moment. And I'm going to go up to object, create 3D text. We'll create a three. And maybe scale that up a little bit. And now I can go over to my material swatches, see that my red orange fire is saved down here and we can now drop that onto the three. Now the thing to note about doing this is as you can obviously see the mapping options were not saved with the material. So when I apply this material to my three, I need to go back into my material doc, click on the texture and reset the mapping to camera view. And then that gives me exactly what I was looking for. And the other thing to know is the position, rotation and scale down here. If we want to move our texture around, we can do that. So if I want to shift my texture a little bit, I can just start clicking on the position here. We can rotate things around and something you'll notice when I do this, you know, I can also tile it, the texture actually make it a little bit more dense, but something to notice about doing this is that if your texture is not repeating, you're going to end up with seams. And this is one of the advantages of using something like one of our other products called texture anarchy, which can create seamless textures. If the texture is seamless, when you tile it or if you move it around on the object, you're not going to see these seams. In some cases, they're not that big of a deal, but in a lot of cases, they can be. So you really want to design image textures and gradients with the ability to tile seamlessly. But that's really only if you're going to be tiling them or moving the position or rotation around. If you're not going to be doing that, the texture should apply onto the object pretty nicely and you shouldn't see too much in the way of seams. But that's about it for the new mapping and texture options in 3D Invigorator 5.0. Again, we've got some great new mapping options here from Spherical, Cubic, Camera View. Those are all very useful. And we've shown off Spherical and Camera View in this one. We have the options to move our textures around on our objects to get exact positioning. And then if we go to our material editor, we have the ability to add in layers. We have the ability to do procedural noise textures, the cellular and cloudy noise. We of course have the ability to add in gradients. And then we have blend modes and alpha channels as ways of combining all these layers together to create the ultimate texture. So lots of cool ways of playing around with this stuff and getting the most out of 3D Invigorator. So thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, definitely check out digitalanarchy.com for all of our other tutorials on 3D Invigorator and our other great products, along with free trials and lots of other resources that all are available on our website. So again, check out www.digitalanarchy.com and thanks for joining me and see you next time.